Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, coming to you live from my mobile studio in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, to be honest. That's where we are right now. You know what I love about this studio that I have here? The colors of my parents' house right here, they actually match up with this graphic color that I've been using for the last two years. I never did that on purpose. I guess I just knew that this graphic color that I have, this like sort of turquoise greenish blue color, must have felt like home. So it's been great being home. I have to tell you, probably the sickest I've ever felt in the last two plus years that I've done daily bachelor content. I don't know what it is. I'm taking some uh, some cold medicine. I'm hanging in there, folks. There's nothing much else I can do other than I'm flying back home tonight. I will mask up and hope that nobody comes in contact with me. That's my hope. Uh, but uh, it'll be good to be back in Los Angeles, although I have to say, ain't nothing like seeing your family, and it has been an amazing birthday weekend. Thank you guys all for the shout-outs. I mean, some of you guys send me Venmo donations. You don't have to do that, folks. Just your support and your ability to ride with me on this content has been amazing. All right, let's get into this story we have here. Tasha Adams is set to compete on a reality TV show, Amazon Freebie's new series, The Goat. Now, if you asked me two weeks ago if I had ever heard of Amazon Freebie's new app, free, it's called Freebie. It's on Amazon, but it's also, I think if you have like a Roku TV or whatever, you can just download it. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to give away any spoilers on anything, but I saw this new show called Jury Duty. I'm going to be going on the a, a different podcast to talk about it this week. It is a fantastic, fantastic, heartwarming show where a guy is doesn't realize he's doing jury duty, and it's a reality show, but he's surrounded by actors playing uh, playing people. So he doesn't realize he's the only one in on this um, very unique set. Um, I'll say no more. It's a great show. If this show called The Goat is half of what jury duty is, it'll be a success. Because, like I said, Jury Duty might be the best show of the year. Seriously, no joke. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think if you watched it. Don't uh, give away any spoilers. Um, all right, so here we have it. And you guys know this on the podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour. I talk more about shows I'm watching and fun things like that. It's just, you know, let's stick to this subject here. But um, we will have an American Idol recap happening um, on the podcast today, Bachelor Rush Hour. So I will be playing. We are down to the top eight on American Idol. If you want to listen to who's doing well, they're absolutely crushing it. Uh, what a better place than Bachelor Rush Hour. Reality TV stars from Bravo, ABC, CBS, TLC, and more are set to compete on Amazon Freebie's upcoming series, The Goat. So they got Vanderpump Rules cast member Kristen, Bachelorette's Tasha Adams, and also um, uh, Grocery Store Joe. He didn't make the list. How is it The Goat if you don't even make it to the press release? Hosted by comedian Daniel Tosh, the competition series brings together 14 reality quote-unquote stars. That's like saying a porn star is a star. It's like, well... I'll be the one to decide, who take up residence in Goat Manor, where they will face a series of mental, physical, and social challenges, the network describes, adding 14 will enter, but only one will win the cash prize in America's respect as they claim the coveted goat title. Well, I hate to break it to you, but um, uh, there's kind of like an oxymoron there. Um, reality TV star, America's respect, they don't always go hand in hand, Hey, but we're Wishing the best for them. So anyway, we don't have a statement from Tasha. Um, she's the type that just like lets her actions speak for her, which is totally cool. She's been so famous and popular. She was, you know, ob obviously like in Bachelor during the height of the pandemic, which is when everyone was wanting to watch. What a season between Claire leaving and they had delayed the season several months. I mean, as an audience, we were thirsty and she quenched that thirst. So Anyway, we'll have to see. Other Bachelor alum, Joe, um, Shaz of Sunset Star, Reza, Farahan, F-Boy Island, CJ Franco, we know her, Survivor winner, Wendell. All right, so lots of um, quote-unquote stars. Reality Steve has the same opinion I do, which is the greatest of all time. I mean, GOAT should be saved for the conversation. The greatest of all time for reality TV is like Boston Rob. Um, you know, like these iconic, huge names. Can, leave a comment who you think are the greatest of all time. I mean, when you talk about uh, basketball, you talk about Michael Jordan, maybe LeBron James. When you talk about football, sorry guys, it's Tom Brady and there ain't a close second. When you talk about, so every, you know, when you talk about power recappers, you look at me, you know what I mean? The greatest of all time. Here, let's hear reality, Steve. And don't forget, he's got a daily podcast every morning. You can check this stuff out. While if his show is called The Goat, Let's let's not mistake ourselves. This whoever wins this thing is not the greatest reality contestant of all time. Uh, this is 
uh, just a list of people who were on reality shows. These aren't villains. These aren't superstars. He's like, let me check the notes. These are just people that have been on TV before. These are just people who happen to be on reality TV, and let's bring them on another show. Let's invite them to see if they want to come on another show that's new, and we'll see what happens. All right, so the same idea I have, which is, okay, sure, they're reality TV people. Hey, but reality TV are people, too. And boy, do we have a story here for you, folks. Writers Guild has decided to go on strike. Uh, this is um, uh, in just a quick graphic, which I think is very telling. Last year, eight major Hollywood studio CEOs made over $773 million in annual salary. Meanwhile, many of the workers who write their shows can't afford rent. That's why the writers Writers Guild of America is ready to go on strike, and they just announced last night that they will be going on strike. We'll be talking about this more. This is a big deal. This is a big workers' issue, and this is going to affect reality TV in the sense that when they went on strike the last time for like a hundred days, you when when a, when if you're going on strike, say say um we're we're making the show Two and a Half Men, all right, um which uh you know. If, if, if you're on episode three and you're writing the show, the day you go on strike, the pen drops, the laptops close, you go outside and you pick it for your rights. And this is probably the most effective way to get change. As we know, in Starbucks, different um, different Starbucks, you know, when, you know, either didn't go on strike or started a union and Starbucks, uh, in some cases, closed down the locations, which is, I believe, illegal to go to, you know, we all have a right to bargain collectively because if we don't do that, a lot of times we're taken advantage of. I understand you might say, hey, Dave, woe is me. My job stinks. I make X amount of money. I'm not happy. Why should I give to the Hollywood elite? And look, one issue doesn't make the other, uh, uh, you know, just because you might be in a tough situation doesn't make someone's situation, um, you know, all of a sudden um, absolved from the humanity of, of trying to have a livable wage. So these are the, the, the top dogs. I mean, we're talking, this is what they made this past year. Bob, Bob uh, the Disney CEO, 32 million. The co-Netflix CEOs, 38 million, 40 million. Rupert Murdoch, 31 million. I mean, he's like, Rupert Murdoch's like 92. Why does he need to be making 31 million if they have writers that are not even making, you know, proper money. And you might say, well, why is this coming about now? Well, what happened was when these streaming services took off, there were deals negotiated because nobody knew how these streaming services were going to make money. You know, these small little services like Netflix, these tiny little things like Discovery, HBO Max, you know, all these companies, no one, no one knew how they were going to take off or that these shows would be as popular. So when Netflix negotiated with, I don't know, Orange is the New Black, um, it was a web TV show, but they've made so, so, so much money that these contracts need renegotiating. So let's see if we can find here. I might have to um, um, shrink this down a little bit. Let's see if we can get this here. Um, I'll just read this article for you. It's kind of cut off. I'm not going to read all of it, but we'll just get a gist of what is going down here. Hollywood hit with writer's strike after talks with AMPTP, the producers, fail. Guild slam studio for gig economy mentality. The Writers Guild of America is on strike. This is one of the biggest stories of the year. And again, this is how it's going to affect reality TV. Reality t TV, for the most part, doesn't use writers. Um, they have producers that sketch ideas, but they, they have a way of sort of working around the writer system. So I expect right now, any show that may have been greenlit, that is a show with writers, WGA, probably won't get produced because they can't. And any show that's a reality show like The Goat is going to do well because they can invest in those shows until the writer strike is sort of taken care of. Um, as, an, as a member of the Screen Actors Guild, um, which I don't do too many auditions anyway, just because a lot of them I don't like. I, t I tell my manager, just like, get me auditions that are for comedic parts or like real, have, you know, I don't want to just be some guy walking by. Like, I'd rather talk to you guys all day, to be quite honest. Um, I get a lot of auditions to play like the villain in an HBO show and just random stuff like that. But those auditions are going to dry up. Anything that has to do with scripted TV is going to dry up. You might not notice this for another year because any show that's in post-production can keep can keep being in post. Post-production meaning they've already shot it, they've already written it. But any show that's being um, 
brought to the 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 pre-production stages right now will not have the use of writers. Now, by the time I release this, the writers and, and the producers may have come to an agreement, but chances are it could be a bloody battle because streaming service, there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of writers that do not like how they've been compensated. News on the strike, which takes effect in a few hours, came late Monday after the guilds negotiating with the producers failed to reach an agreement on a new film and scripted TV contract. It's the Writers Guild of America's first strike since the 100-day walkout of 2007. Less than an hour after talks with the studios ended and over three hours before their current contract officially expires, the Guild also made a public announcement of the labor action. Following the unanimous recommendation of the Writers Guild and Negotiating Committee, the Board of Directors of the Writers Guild of America West and the Council of the Writers Guild of America East, acting upon the authority granted to them by their memberships, have voted unanimously to call a strike, effective midnight, Tuesday, May 1st, May 2nd. The decision was made following six weeks of negotiations with Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Disney, Discovery, Warner, NBC, Universal, Paramount, and Sony under the umbrella of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Yeah, so everything I said, the the idea that um, you know you give a mouse a cookie, right? If they they let these negotiations, maybe maybe in goodwill, maybe because they didn't realize how big streaming would be. Uh, put it this way. In Screen Actors Guild, the average like day rate is like nine hundred dollars, and you might say, "Dave, that's so much money." Well, a lot of actors might only work one or two days a month, or never really. Some people, some people go years without working. So it's important that when you are on set, you're you're fully compensated so that you don't starve. Well, um, the new media contracts were only paying one hundred dollars a day. Again, this is for actors. But what you what you realize is that um, if production companies can take advantage they will because they're psychopathic and they're just trying to maximize their profits and make more money so they can invest in new projects but we got to take care of the sort of lifeblood of a show which is the writing um all overtown agents and producers are moving with last minute haste to get deals sewn up before midnight so in some cases some scribes can get one last paycheck we hear the guild started making picket signs last week after issuing a long list of strike rules which prohibit members from working on struck productions and from selling and pitching scripts during the strike um, you know we cover um, we cover Katie Thurston and she's been writing a script and I'm assuming she's writing it with a Writers Guild of America writer they will no longer be able to do the writing i mean look could they do something on the back doors yes but if you cross the picket line you're considered a scab which means you're lessening the negotiating power because what all we have is the um is is the collective bargaining we can do as we hold hands now i saw some of your comments from a few days ago saying dave we don't you know i don't like unions i'm anti-union and i have family members that are anti-union too there are different unions i don't know too much too much about the ins and outs of other unions but i have to tell you the spirit of a union is to protect us from essentially working at slave labor like like happened in the past. Uh, production companies and corporations had all the power in the world, and with automation, that's not looking like it's going anywhere. Uh, there'll always be somebody who's poorer than you that will take a job for less money than you, and the minimum wage uh, is not a livable wage. Nobody can provide for a family off the minimum wage, so it's these unions that get together and really use their leverage for good. I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this. How was I able to tie Tasha to uh, union uh, regulations? Well, that's why they call me the GOAT. All right, folks, more content coming your way. I have to tell you, if you haven't checked it out, I've got a podcast. I'll give you a quick 30 seconds. This is yesterday's private Patreon where my wife joined me on my birthday to just discuss some fun family topics. I'm accusing me of having blocked her. She goes, you, uh, you must, you, Tasha must be blocking me. I can't. So we pick up my sister Chase's phone and it says, and we pull up Tasha's account and it says, I click the three dots. Would you like to unblock Tasha? <laughs> so my sister accidentally blocked my wife on Instagram. That's the type of content you're getting behind the scenes. The drama of blocking someone on social media. How oh, Thanksgiving's going to be a wild time this year. I want to say from the deep down depths of my heart, thank you so much for all the kind birthday wishes, everybody. Uh, accompanied by my trip back home and all of your support, it has been just a hug from the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. More content coming to you right after this.